Wow. Tell me this is not ridiculous. Look how heavy this Whopper Plopper is. Are y'all ready for this? Hard cast. You've got to be kidding. What's up guys? About to step inside. Let's show you guys what we're working with. Just spooled it up with the Power Pro 30 pound white braided line. Hocus Pocus Focus. Let's see what she looks like. Look at that. Ooh, exciting. I've got the Scorpion DC reel, so I've got an idea of the braking system. The line capacity is also higher on this one. It's a 150 rating as opposed to a 100. This is adjustable from one through four, and two is where it's supposed to be at for braided line in most conditions. And that's one thing I liked about the Scorpion is it was, there's an auto setting. There's one, two, three, four, and then there was also an auto setting, and that works for almost anything you could ever throw, whether it's windy, whether it's not, whether it's light, whether it's heavy, tackle, and it was phenomenal. So we're gonna see how this one works on two is uh, the way I'm thinking we're gonna play it out from the start. So anyways, let me figure out which rod we're gonna toss this thing on, and then we will get into the more in-depth specs. All right, that wasn't too tough of a decision. I think we're gonna go with the Fate Black Rod. We'll take off the cheaper, we'll take off the cheaper American Hero spool, uh, Speed Spool and we will toss on the Corrado. All right, y'all, it's days later, but I finally got a chance to bring the Corrado out for the first time. And uh, I tied it onto the Fate Black Rod and I snapped the rod in our door because I was gonna take it out to the garage and just put it away and it happens. So it's now on a snapped fate black rod, but we're gonna go with the flow. I kinda used a razor blade and cut it right next to one of the eyelets. I think we lost less than a foot of the rod, so we should be just fine. That was your first cast over here, wasn't it? Yep. Dang it, he's better than most of them that we've seen out here. Well, I'm staying right here then. David's first cast over here. <laughs> yeah, he did. I've lost so many worms. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 he was biting it, damn. Right there where you had it. He's got two already. Oh, it hopped off right by his feet. It's really windy. So watch this. It's windy as you can tell, casting straight into it with a weightless Senko with a rod that's no longer 7.4, it's like 6.4. So um, that's gonna affect the distance just a little bit. And I've got like 30 pound braids, so it could be lighter line as well if you're using a setup like a wacky rig. And yet it still should not backlash. Bam. Pretty cool. That's why you get these DC reels, I'll tell you that much. Oh, there we go. Oh, it's about time. Golly. And he hammered it. That was a, uh, wow. I normally don't have him hit the wacky rig like that. Look at that hook set. Yep, I see the hook, that's for sure. Yeah, he just grabbed that sucker and ripped it. Most of the times, you know, you'll get some little bites on the wacky rig, but uh, not this guy, he was seriously hungry. Cool, there he goes. First catch on the new Corrado DC. We might have to retire this wacky rig now. Uh, might use something else, that way you guys get to see what else this thing's capable of, but I'll tell you what. Um, pretty thrilled on how well it handled on the two setting because the brakes go one through four again so I'm pretty thrilled at how it handled casting this really light bait for the last hour didn't get any backlashes so and that was casting into the wind quite a bit of the time and making far casts quite a bit of the time and uh, yeah it all adds up to the reason I like these so much but let's go ahead we might move to another spot all right guys, we just made it to the second spot. I forgot the shades. The sun is peeking out though. <laughs> Holy smokes. Anyways, we're gonna be fishing this pond right here. 
and I just tied on a uh, chatterbait. All right, cool. I think it was a little quieter, the DC system uh, with the wacky rig, but now throwing a little bit of a heavier bait, it seems to be a little bit louder, which I, I like. Not too loud, but just right. We're gonna put this on one. We're gonna see if we can reach the other side, the bank over there. I had it on two, I was about 10 feet short, maybe eight feet. Wow. We were like a foot away from the other side. I pretty much hit the, the rock wall over there. You can get some distance with this thing. This is definitely not like a, a short cast either. Like to hit the other side is pretty far away. I'm just burning this baby back in here. All right, we want to get a straight cast. Let's see what happens. I think we can possibly hit the other side. We're just a foot away from it, but you, you know, you can tell it's a pretty aggressive cast. All right, let's see what happens. Do we got it? Do we got it? Oh, we made it. We've, we've hit land. Oh my gosh. Dude, this thing will cast. I'll tell you that much. Now the problem is, okay. <laughs> Didn't get caught on the rocks over there. That was, that was the worry. <laughs> wow. Man, so you can cast this thing on one with braid and get some really good distance. Now the wind is a little bit more mild, of course. In fact, there's not too much of it, just a slight breeze. And uh, it's not in our favor. It's not going this way. It's kind of coming this way. So uh, that was a far cast. Casting on this thing is great. The reeling is so smooth. Like everything's perfect, I feel like. Well, you say perfect, like everything is phenomenal. Um, when you palm this thing, it's got like the perfect shape. So, I mean, it's literally, oof, feels good. And the finish, look at the finish out. On the Scorpion, I think this piece here is not the same material as the rest of the reel, but then on the uh, Corrado, it looks like it's got the same finish. Um, I think it's kind of rubber on the Scorpion. I'll have to go take a look, because I might be 100% wrong, but man. This thing is sweet. Well, I'm gonna have to switch. He, he's saying he got a bite on the wacky rig first cast. Um, wow, God, one feels so good. As long as it's not windy, I would just keep it on one when I'm using braid. And braid is what I'm always gonna use on this thing. So, I mean, it's, uh, it's gonna stay on one or two, depending on the wind. I just, I love how the Scorpion has the auto setting because you would never have to adjust it and it recalculates and it's, it works so well for baits across the uh, weight spectrum that you'd be throwing. So. That's a bummer that it doesn't have auto, but other than that, oh my gosh, it's like so smooth on one. I, I like casting it on one better than two. You can tell there's a lot less resistance, but it's still doing the work with the uh, DC system. All right, well, we're gonna put her up, and I think I'm actually gonna try the Scorpion for a minute, because I already have a crankbait tied on. And that'll give us a different bait to see what they're biting on because if uh, David gets a couple more on the wacky rig, I'll definitely give it a go. But let's see how the other DC Shimano reel I have compares to the uh, Corrado. Yeah, look at, you can tell the line capacity. The spool is definitely thinner on the Scorpion than on the uh, Corrado. The finish is also a little torn up on the Scorpion because it's been used and abused. But, uh, yeah, see, here we go, the auto setting. Ooh, that's money right there. All right, let's go ahead and just give you guys a little side profile. Basically, everything's black on the Scorpion, except for a little red on the tension uh, knob there. It's got a good look to it. But I think this one looks more... Uh, it's got more of like an expensive-looking finish out, almost, even though it is slightly cheaper. We're doing it, folks. We're busting out the $5 two-piece Walmart rod. Just get a little comparison. Why not? Between the two DC reels before I decide to just go wacky rig. The other one does it too. I think this one's louder though. I, yeah, I like it. I don't know why it is, but it's my favorite. If I get a big old fish, I don't think this rod's gonna do anything but break. <laughs> right? Yeah, so the Scorpion's definitely louder. One thing I guess I never, I never noticed this, but the button doesn't go all the way across. I just never noticed that, but on the Corrado it does. Um, which doesn't mean a dang thing, because whatever the system is that they have is perfect and it works flawlessly. I've never had an issue with it like locking up and not working properly, unlike some other cheaper reels that I have. Kind of why I understand you pay the big bucks for the reels like this. Um, 
yeah, like that cast right there, it would have gotten a backlash on most other reels. I can almost guarantee it because I was just flopping it overhand and the rod went like do 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 and that would kind of mess up the line getting taken out on most reels, but this one kind of compensates for it with the digital chip. This and the Corrado, so it's pretty crazy, man. I, I love using these. He's good, He's good huh? Might might be two pounds. Yeah, let me let's weigh him. Possibly. I don't know. 2.3? 2.3? Yeah. Ooh, no, 231. So almost closing in on two and a half. Alright. Off like a prom dress. There we go. <laughs> yeah, he's under two pounds. That's a nice one. Yeah, he's not too bad. A little under two. Oh, flip flop. The hippie, the hippie to the hip hip hop. You got a catfish. <laughs> catfish, you're feeling the wacky rig today, huh? I guess so. I think this is like number six for him today, and I'm on like a couple. He probably is close to two. <laughs> He's on a roll. I don't got time to keep filming him. I gotta try and catch another one. <laughs> Smallest one of the day is the last, last one. one. <laughs> Nine fish for you or something like that. Yep. Crazy. I've been slacking today. What's up guys? We're back out of Savannah. I wanted to try this thing out in the morning time and do some topwater fishing with it. So it is about 7.45 in the morning or so. No, not even. We just missed the sunrise by about 15 minutes. And I, like I say, want to give the Whopper Plopper a shout out on the Corrado. So we're going to tie it on real fast. I got to put a different battery and card into one of the GoPros and we're going to get right to it. I want to uh, see if we can't catch a big fish out here since David was showing me up yesterday with a bunch of catches and I couldn't get hardly anything on the DC. Let's try it out this morning and see if we can get some topwater action. Here we go, you guys know I like the Palomar knot. You gotta give yourself a lot of extra line if you're tying on something big like the Whopper Plopper. That should hold up to even the biggest bass out here. Ooh, this thing is gonna get their attention this morning. All right, don't scratch the paint. I gotta do a review of this Plano backpack sometime soon too. That is on the list of vlogs to film and edit. There we go, first almost backlash. What happened is I still have it on uh, on one. See, this is why I like the auto function of the um, Scorpion. Anyways, that won't happen again because I just put it on two. We'll see how it fares. I think I need to adjust the tension. They say on, the, on this reel specifically, you want it to be like right past the point where it falls. So you want it tightened up like normally what you'd want to do is tighten it up to where it just drops very slowly but on this one they say you want it to where it like just barely doesn't drop just past that point I think that's good right there cool because the idea is it hits the water and you don't get a backlash how crazy is that have you seen a lot of other reels do that that's ridiculous dang I can't believe that actually just happened. I'm going to try and cast a little further. This is a heavy lure too. So let's see if it gets somewhat of a backlash. Casting it out. Wow. Dudes. Oh my gosh. Like you could just go get a regular reel with your standard braking system. But I'm telling you. Oh, that's going to hit the. Nope. <laughs> Big old splash. Get... Oh, there we go. First one. Oh yes. And he's all right. He might be, uh, I mean, he's no, he's not big, but he's at least two. First one in the morning. Yes, dudes, we've been out here for maybe 10 minutes. Uh, we got him in two places, though. I'm going to break out the pliers. These are some decent-sized treble hooks. Yes. Um, he's, he's not necessarily worth weighing. I'd say he's just over two, but uh, we're going to toss him back. That was sweet. And that was on that big bounce. He probably heard that thing coming from yards away. Whopper plopper will get it done. 10 minutes in. I haven't fished top water in a while either. And this reel brings him in like a champ. But I'm wondering, yeah, I need to tighten the drag just a just a hair. Oh, that's feeling good. Yeah, they ain't gonna be pulling none of that. Um dang man, that was the, the first bass over like a pound that we've caught on this thing, and that was sweet. 
Holy smokes. And uh, these are the type of videos that are fun to make because I'm just trying to demonstrate the reel. So to, to catch the fish is kind of like a bonus, right? <laughs> and you might just get lucky like I just did. Crazy, you don't even have to stop this thing. Man, this is, <laughs> I'm in love with this reel. And this is why you spend the money as well, guys. You really uh, want a reel that you can rely on over time. I've got some cheaper reels that, uh, that I bought when I first started fishing and they're no longer working or every once in a while they'll just, the, the handle will get stuck. At times the release doesn't work on all my reels every single time, it's just annoying. Like you'll, you'll, you'll click it and you'll go to cast on some cheaper reels that I have. And when I say cheaper, they're like, like within the 50 to 80 or $90 range. And after a while this button just kind of stops working very well to where it doesn't release all the way on some of them. And I've never had a problem with either of my Shimano's. Uh, and of course I just got this one, but I've used the Scorpion extensively. Never had an issue with that release, never had an issue with the handle, never never had issues. And uh, so that's why you might spend the money on something like this that's gonna last you, as opposed to something a little cheaper. Oh, good idea, hit the tree. But did y'all catch that though? No backlash. That would have been the death of another reel. You can't be hitting trees. Surefire backlash. Oh, see, that would have been a backlash on another reel, not on this one. I hit the uh, leaves and the tree. I'm just tearing up this whopper plopper, too. I forget how much it was 10, 15 bucks. All right, guys, I think I'm happy with that real world testing of the Corrado DC. You know, you guys had an opportunity to see it throw some of the lightest baits you're ever gonna throw, a weightless Sanko, something like a wacky rig, straight into the wind. I literally would not be able to do this with almost any other bait caster out there aside from the DCs unless you're making a sacrifice. And what I mean by that is you're either gonna have the brakes on max and you're barely gonna get any distance casting into the wind with something like this, like barely any distance at all. And, or you're going to go ahead and turn the brakes down on a regular bait caster and you can cast it a little further but there's a very high chance of a backlash casting into the wind in those conditions like I had seen out at Savannah at the ponds. So uh, it literally is, makes all the difference. Now something like the chatter bait we threw actually made probably the furthest cast I've ever made. This is no joke. Going from that little peninsula I was on all the way to the other side of that pond is a far cast. We, we tossed this crankbait out on the scorpion just for a moment so we're not going to really talk about that but the whopper plopper big and heavy baits no problem for the bait caster you saw we caught that decent two plus pounder or so on it and uh, nothing to it man so it's literally one of my favorite reels. My next couple big purchases as far as the fishing equipment goes is just going to be these DC reels. I'm looking into the Metanium that's the one I want to probably get next and, and we'll go from there. But if you do like this reel and any of the gear that we've ended up using, the GoPros, the chest mounts and the mic adapters, everything I use for the vlogs in case you guys decide to get one of these reels for yourself and want to film some of your catches, I link it down in the description. That way you guys have an opportunity to take a look at it. And also I would probably, although it's only 250 bucks, budget probably a thousand bucks if you're looking into these reels because by the time you get this thing, you're probably going to want about three more. So just so you know. <gasps>